amateur musician uh, since my early years. But I always thought about music as something that's limited to the performance experience. You play a few chords, you sing a few songs, you get on stage, people enjoy your music, they clap, you get on stage, and that's it. But my perspective totally changed when I started a semester long course on music science myself. And I got to know that there's so much science, so much mathematics involved in this field that you can keep exploring this for all your life. So I decided on starting this little venture. We started having these classes. We used to gather in our business block at uh, Portland Christian College. And uh, uh, our classes uh, consisted of uh, talk lectures on multimedia. And half of the session sometimes would be practical playing. So we continued having these sessions. Sometimes we would, sit, we would just sit informally and I would boss them around, as you can see. And uh, sometimes we would just gather on Saturdays. Now what's special about this rehearsal session is uh, that the students would come and rehearse on a holiday when there's no classes going on. So that's the greatest thing that you can have as a teacher, students sacrificing their free time. And uh, we used to sit at campus in an open cafeteria. And there's no students around us because it's a holiday and our sound would just resonate throughout the campus. Our sound would just immerse with the nature that would be around us, the trees, the birds flowing by, and we would just sit there and uh, play for three to four hours, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't even realize that all this time was going by. So within this group, I was fortunate enough to have some individuals belonging to different disciplines, different fields, who were motivated to continue playing and I started pushing them on stage, and we formed this small group. And I'm sure we've been having a wonderful experience along. True, true enough. I remember when I decided to take up the violin and disclose this decision to my family, my parents said, Beta, so the time is right, and my sisters asked, Why are you not learning guitar? Fair enough. A question that I asked myself invariably numerous times later on, questioning myself why. Why this instrument in particular? No one in my family learns it that I should be inspired, and there was never one moment that a light bulb lit over my head and I decided to learn it. Violin or classical music in general had always been in the background of my formative years, whether it was through Mickey Mouse City Symphony cartoons or when the Hikoala pedaled through the neighborhood as Beethoven's parodies drifted through a speaker. <coughs> Very good. But, but coming to class for the first time, I was overwhelmed as we dove headfirst into the history, anatomy, and theory of this instrument before we were even allowed to touch it. An instrument requiring delicate care and meticulous handling asked us to be both diligent and responsible. Uh, I think it feels the nicest to do something when somebody says you can never do, and one day you actually do it. So, uh, challenge, I believe challenge is the right word I would use. Challenge was always there in form of time lapse, people, societal aspects, social taboo. That always appeared in the form of roadblocks, and but we still kept going. For instance, our parents wondered, "Ke hamare bache time toh nahi zaya kar rahe hain," and log kya karenge? So I still wonder, log kaise kya hai? What we what kept us going was the love and passion we had for music, and we kept going until our efforts and struggles started to turn more meaningful. I would say. Talking about challenges, I always thought ye kisi science ke student ke baat ki baat nahi hai. Uh, anyways, I took the violin class and I remember there was a great diversity among the students. There were students from different backgrounds, from uh, uh, some were studying economics, business, business sciences and uh, other departments as well. So I think it was quite uh, enough for me to learn this beautiful instrument. But sure enough, when we started playing, it wasn't the most beautiful sound in the world. 
I remember personally, I would practice only when the light would go out during load shedding hours because then my neighbors would turn on the generator and that would drown out the noise I would make. <laughs> and I made noise, ladies and gentlemen. We all made noise. We made loud, scratchy, abrasive, glorious noise until one day that noise came out. Thank you. Thank you. Until one day that noise turned into melody. Yeah, they were the scratchy sounds I remember those days. And we were successful making them into, turning them into melodies. And I remember uh, then we were creative enough, we could go out, play in public, and I remember people would gather. And one day what happens is, people would put forward their requests and we would always play them. But what happens is, one day this guy comes to us, I'm sitting, I'm playing violin, and he takes out his phone, puts it on my ear, and plays this Shah Rukh Khan Mohabbat Ne Wali theme, and then asks, Bhai Jan, ye baja sakte hain, ye baja sakte hain. <laughs> so, we did play that theme, but somewhere we did not feel so good about it. We felt that violins have their own origin, they have their own genre, culture, and history. And any, if we are doing the same thing with the violins, that, is, that does not just feel right. So we had to explore different fields, and we started working on different, we started to listen to more classical music and history of it. And, and we were, we had to do something, we had to basically redefine people's perception about violins. Violins are not particularly for sad, dark, and romantic music only, you hear. And so we had to come to a common page where we can find like minds and we play things that people want to listen and we want to play. That is where we had to come and that was our challenge, the redefining moment of our lives. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, when we were just going and playing along and learning along the way, I think that uh, we were just having a journey uh, together as a team. And uh, from the violin's perspective, uh, when you think about it deeply, I always uh, think about the violin playing experience itself as a journey in the wilderness. Now to show you, uh, if you see the structure of this instrument, it's basically four strings that have been stretched across a fingerboard. And there's no markings whatsoever to guide you where you need to put your fingers, where you're going to produce certain sound frequencies. So, um, the violin. I was uh, reading a, a very interesting book called The Violin Maker, which, uh, which is about uh, a manufacturer from Brooklyn. And I came across this wonderful phrase uh, where he calls this instrument a magical wooden box. He goes on to say that uh, when you cut down a tree to craft a violin, the tree actually gets a new life. Now, there's tree, trees that's been cut down to make other things too, like the chairs, the ones that you're sitting on right now. There's furniture as well. So I think what he meant here was that uh, the sound, the tone, the texture of the violin is something that is closely living, which is closely related to human life itself. There's ups, there's downs, and there's so much diversity of emotions, moods that you can portray with this, with this instrument. And uh, a fellow violinist of mine from Tunisia used to say that the melodies that you can produce may be beautiful, rich, heartwarming. At the same time, they may be cold, vacant, or mechanical. So there's a great diversity of what you can achieve with this instrument. So when the player looks at the instrument, uh, I'd like to show you a small clip over here. Uh, yeah. So this wooden stick at which we play the instrument, and this is called the bow. It's horse hair uh, attached to a wooden stick. The bow in this journey acts as a vehicle. It's a form of transport that allows you to travel in this wilderness. And as you concentrate on the fingers of the player, you can see that the hand moves back and forth, back and forth. So this uh, journey does not have any fixed destination. It's a two-way journey. It's finite boundaries, but you can explore infinite possibilities within these boundaries. But within this journey, you are going to make stops. You are going to breeze through some points at fast and you are going to stay and not play at any points. So when it's a wilderness, what's going to help you find your way the next time you pick up your instrument? This is going to help you. These are the calluses, the marks that develop on the fingers of an instrument over time when he practices, when he plays. 
And these calluses actually allow you to connect to your wilderness and find your way the next time. Um, when I think about uh, the playing experience in a group, I think that we are fellow travelers who have their own wilderness. We've got our own instruments and uh, we've got our own wilderness and uh, we are trying to explore it. But at some points we may be in agreement with each other as there may be uh, with any group. So th at that point our sound sounds good to the listeners. But when we are not in agreement, when we are uh, dissonant, it sounds bad to the crowd. So I think uh, this is what makes this whole journey uh, analogy so, so important uh, when you're playing the violin as a group. I think as a group we also learn how to play in harmony. Harmony is something that the violin requires to its utmost. But as we do play along, we realize that the violin itself becomes an extension of our arm. It becomes an extension of our voice. It allows us to sing without singing and allows us to express emotions which do not allow themselves to be confined or defined by words in any language. Ladies and gentlemen, the music that we want to play, it isn't vulgar. It's not asking you to be promiscuous, not telling you to indulge in over-glamorized vices. It's music written by with centuries old wisdom, written by the soul and for the soul. It reverberates with each heartbeat and gives peace of mind. Yeah, and then. Old words, uh, I think when something is coming from within your soul, you can just do anything with it. It's universal. You can play it by a bonfire, you can play it at bookshops uh, for children, uh, you can play it as a patriot if you want, um, you can play it at fashion show ramps, and uh, Oh, you can uh, even give uh, wedding tributes to people with your best friends when you go. Only the best friends. Uh, yeah. Only the best friends. <laughs> and you can also play it uh, when the lights go out. <laughs> yeah. So to sum up all that we've been talking about, uh, we're now going to play you two soundtracks. Uh, the first one that we're going to be playing uh, is a cover song. And this is from a Disney animated movie called Frozen. So you can enjoy it. <laughs>
we're going to be playing. Uh, this is an original composition of mine that I made around three years ago, and it's a Spanish-inspired tune, slightly fast. This is called Spanish Alley, so we're going to do an orchestral arrangement of the song. Mm -hmm. 